Hey guys, what's going on? So welcome back to JM Farming Cattle. So I just realized uh, before I shot some of my other videos, clips, that I never did an intro for this video. So, welcome to JM Farming Cattle. Uh, I went to the Aurora Owners Acres and they had a special guest speaking, which most of you guys guessed it. Kind of hard not to I guess but Zach Johnson with Minnesota Millennial Farmer was there and he did some speaking he spoke for probably a good hour and uh, it was really cool to listen to him speak and I got to meet up with him after and talk to him for a while and that was pretty cool uh, just to talk about our farms and how different they are um, you know just how much shorter their growing season is than what we have here and what we're used to uh, it's it's pretty amazing so that was really cool so I'm gonna jump back and I got a video clip of him talking a little bit and then I went and I did some corn silage what a mess who owns that I own that can't get any work done there at the new feed yard because it just keeps raining so we did get a lot of stuff done but it just we need more dirt hauled in there and now it's muddy so anyways let's get rolling to this and then i'll see you back here in a little bit the tractor there and he set the 12 gauge at his feet with six rounds in it and then he took six clay pigeons in his bare hands stacked on top of each other and he threw them up barehanded perfect formation after he tossed them he bent over grabbed the shotgun and shot from the hip and hit six clay pigeons before any of them hit the ground. Six shots. If you think that's impressive, his brother Aaron has done that with eight of them from behind the head, bending over doing the windmill. These guys do some fun stuff. Steven's actually got the world record for uh, the longest crossbow shot. He hit a balloon from, it was 640 or 680 yards away with the crossbow. He fired it off, and he watched and watched and watched and thought, no, I missed that one. And he bent down and grabbed another arrow and the balloon popped. And he stood up and said, was that it? Did I shoot it or did the balloon just pop? They checked the replay. He hit it dead center in the middle of that balloon. So these guys have got, got all kinds of cool stuff like that going on. Recently, they came up to our farm and uh, they climbed up to the top of the grain lane with 12 gauges and they pitched baseballs to me using the 12 gauges and I never could catch one and because the trajectory after they'd shoot it, it was moving back so fast that you get under the ball and think it was coming like a pop fly and it would land 20 feet behind me and I, I couldn't do it. But we had a lot of fun that day and it was just a, another interesting, fun way to connect with people and, and show people that farmers can have fun on the farm. Up on the top left there, that was uh, me and Randy, my buddy, the master pipe player there with his new inner drain tile plow. We decided to do some modeling that day for inner drain. So I apologize to all of you for that. But we had some fun with that. Down on the bottom right there, that's a, a thumbnail from one of my more popular videos at the time where it was uh, the end of January. It was about 20 degrees below outside. And there was a blizzard coming. And I had to stack the sheds appropriately so that we had enough work to do for the rest of the week because I knew we were going to get a lot of snow. And I didn't want to have to open the shed doors all week. So I wanted to stack a certain way. So that meant that I had to take just about everything out of both sheds that we own and get it in the yard and then restack everything so that we could work on the stuff. And of course, it was the end of January and we had finished harvesting probably around Thanksgiving and cleaned everything up and put it away. So this stuff hadn't been running for two months, a lot of the big machinery. And the shed doors were frozen shut. The batteries were all dead. The blizzard was coming in and it was miserable and I was crabby. And I talked to my wife and she had called on the phone to see how the day was going and I told her, was not going very well and I didn't really want to talk and I didn't want to uh, film this video and I just wanted to get the day out and go back in the house. <clears throat> What's going on guys? So I'm filming with my phone today so I hope the video turns out okay and uh, the volume you can hear me all right. Forgot my camera but today uh, I am helping a friend of mine. I. He owns a feed yard, or they own a feed yard here close by, and they're chopping silage, and he asked me if I'd come help and drive the push tractor today, because I got a field that's pretty muddy in spots, and they need me to push the trucks through that they're, they have straight trucks, 
Um, I'll get a video of it up here farther, but they have tandem straight trucks that they use and they drive through the field and follow the chopper and then so all those trucks can't go through a lot, so they get stuck. And then I got a bail pusher on the front of this tractor here and then I can just push them. There's two tires and a big brace and a bumper on the back of the trucks. A little stuffy, sorry, I think I'm catching a cold. But, uh, so I help push them through. And uh, so I'm gonna be doing that for the next few hours today. It's kind of a fun little job. It's kind of cool seeing silage. Uh, silage is, watching silage is pretty cool to me. Uh, it's impressive. So they got two choppers, and I'm not sure how many trucks. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. Had quite a bit of wind damage. They're part of that storm. Hit them pretty good. This is basically what I do: is I just follow the truck, and then when it gets muddy, I'll get up close behind them, and then I can push them if I need to. This chopper right here is an 8200 John Deere. Uh, I think it's got a six-row head on it. Is what they classify it as. So we're back here at the shop now and today me and dad are gonna work on this because it we got some rain last night we have nothing else we can really do because of the rain rains nice but we're tired of it we want it to go away we want the heat to come out so we can start harvest so I got my or my wheels ordered uh, said they ship today so hopefully they're here by the end of the week fingers crossed because I really want to get rolling on this so we can get it ready but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take off all these brackets right here, because kind of like I did here, because we're gonna have to bend some of these. You can tell they're a little crooked. So and then we're gonna take these off, chop them here, and then we're gonna get ready to weld on our new ends. But we probably won't weld those on until we get the wheels to know for sure. So let's get started. So now what we were working on is we were trying to get these off 
um, because we do not longer need these. You guys ever get tired of getting restricted phone calls and salespeople and credit card services and healthcare yadi dada? Can't get nothing done with those guys. Anyways, so the wheel we're going to, we don't need the V right here. Uh, we are switching out of this and we're just chopping it straight off and then we're going to put a bolt end on it because the new wheels we're getting you'll slide a bolt through the wheel and then just put a nut on the opposite side. Um, so we just got to knock that V off. Now we could go to the store and we could buy some flat iron like this thick times however many we need the right length but one we won't ever use these again so we might as well use the metal we have because it's free and two if this is pretty thick stuff and if we were to try and drill two holes into new ones we'd have to do two holes times 36 rows that's 72 yeah 72 holes that we would have to drill and that's a lot of drilling and that I hate drilling metal especially something that thick that just take forever so what we're doing is we're just chopping them off and then we got our flat bar and then we'll just clean up it's still hot we'll just clean up down there and then we'll put our bolt bracket that we're going to make on the bottom of there and then we'll be able to just bolt that up bolt a new wheel to it. Alright guys, so now what we are doing is we are working on the we got the, the, the we got the drill folded out and now we are going to work on these V wheels. And basically just gotta go through here, see which ones spin, which ones don't, which ones have bad bearings and then get parts ordered for that so we can get that going. Also, I was looking at all the charts here on the drill. And basically, I'm trying to figure out how to set this for uh, cereal rye, which is basically kind of like wheat, but there is a rye on here. <coughs> and I'm trying to figure out how to set that uh, this is a John Deere 515. So if you're familiar with the John Deere 515 or I think a 450 is pretty similar Comment down below because I got a lot of questions for you on how to set this Because I figured it out how the chart says but the guy wrote down way different numbers So let me know went to John Deere and Picked up some bearings So we had 10 bearings on the True V disc that were out. Uh, so I picked up a dozen. I got two extra that way just in case. Um, in case we find another one or one goes out later on. So we'll have a couple on spare. Uh, I needed four disc, two seed tubes. I think that was it. But they didn't have any of that. Not that I'm surprised. Oh, I need a couple bolts too. And then their uh, computer system went down, so I guess I get the bearings and that's it, which is fine. I'll be able to put the bearings on tomorrow and get most of 
the wheels and stuff back on so that'll be nice uh, we're gonna hurry up and try and punch that out in the morning because then in the about 11 o'clock or a little after we have some kids coming again uh, every this will be the second year they've done it that kids come and just kind of tour the farm they're preschoolers or kindergartners I think preschoolers and they just kind of walk around and see all the animals and the big machinery and stuff so we enjoy that uh, probably won't do any filming of that just because of all the complications of uh, kids being on camera and now it's just too much liability and stuff so there won't be a video on that or anything but that's what's going on tomorrow so after that then we'll get back to work on that drill get all these bearings put in that we have uh, we'll just be waiting on a few things and waiting on our wheels to come in so we can put all of our press wheels back on other than that we got a little bit of hay in the do this week uh, our fourth cutting alfalfa is getting tall enough that we can cut it it ain't gonna amount to much but something to cut so and then if we can keep the rain away I think we'll be probably cutting some beans or something Yellow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. Alrighty. Yep, thanks. Well, that was John Deere. They just called me and told me that my parts are going to be in in the next couple days. So, i to get this drill done yet. Uh, hopefully by the end of the week. Because, like I said, harvest is going to be starting in probably another week. I would think beans are turning really fast and we got some dry land corn that we'll be wanting to put up and so that's what's going on now um, that's all I got for you guys on this week's video on today's video Monday's video and I will see you guys back here on Thursday with an update of whatever we're doing alright guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time